in the lifestyle of the Prophet Muhammad to follow what he did when he was in Arabia. We know after the first revelation came to him in the mountain of Hira, the mountains of lights. The first revelation after that comes, the Prophet, peace be upon him, he was always engaged with the people that he was living with. He never went back to Garahira again. And when he was delivering the message to the people, he was always be aware of his responsibility. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he reminded him again and again. We read verse of the Quran in Surah Al-Mudassir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses a strong phrase. Qul, ya yufal mudassir. Qum, wake up, arise, fa'anzir, and warn the people. Wa rabbuka fa'abdir. And you magnify your Lord, you glorify your Lord. This is the message coming again and again. So the Prophet Muhammad he was busy with the people who were surrounding him. Not yet they were accepting the message of Islam. But he never escaped from his responsibility to carry the message. Never mind people sometimes call him mad. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he defended the Prophet that Ma'anta bin'amat rabbika min majnoon that the Prophet, peace be upon him, was not mad. Because he was aware of his responsibility. So that is the responsibility we Muslims should carry. Living here in Sweden or in the West, we have best opportunity because the law and the system given us an opportunity to at least to speak what is just, what is right. They are allowing us to, to express ourselves and our views and our understanding. No matter what is the profession that we are, either a student or a teacher, or being an employee, or an employer, or a businessman, or an individual and an athlete. Whatever the profession we are in, we must engage in carrying this message to our fellow, uh, fellow human beings. Let it be our neighbors. Let us invite them to our organizations. Alhamdulillah, we have the most today. So we should invite them, give them the Swedish salad and uh, the coffee and the uh, buller. So, and let them explain the vital task, that is to understand the message. Yeah, no, no. You know, the, this is the Awal Sunnah of the Prophet Sallam, that he always invite the people and he used to slaughter the camels and he used to feed them. And then he used to give them the, give them the message of the peace. And this is the best way we also recommend the Muslims. The best way to enter the heart of the people is by entering the stomach of the people. And we know the test of our foods. And then slightly we should give and take an opportunity by ourselves to explain what is Islam. By Allah, look at the nature of the Swedish people. They are already practicing most of the habits and the good manners from Islam. Look at their punctuality, their honesty, their discipline. Hardly you find uh, that they have the problems with the faith and other practices in Friday and Saturday. But the rest of the things what they are practicing is knowingly or unknowingly, is the virtue of Islam. So there are people who are awaiting to accept the message of peace. If we can explain them and if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide them properly. Look at the society now. Without the impact of the Muslims, the vast majority of the scholars in the West, especially, they are the reverse, those who are newly uh, to Islam. And they are doing that and carrying this message of da'wah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed about these people in the same chapter, Surah Al-Imran chapter 3 verse 104, that let there arise a group of people who will always invite others towards Allah and they should perform the righteous deeds and these are the people who will be successful. Look at the present scholars of Islam, the rivers especially, coming from another background, living in this environment of the West, having all these pleasures and freedoms. Yet they submit themselves to the deen of peace. And they are now promoting the peace towards their neighbors. So we are now told, Yastabdil qawman wairakum. Do not look down upon people, because you will be substituted by them. So we looking down upon them, that they will not understand the message. But Allah chose them, and He made them torch bear before us. That take the examples from them, and you should carry the responsibility before you face the destruction. So, my dear brothers and sisters, never mind wherever we are or what is our profession. The media surrounding us 
is, is a vital tool. They are playing a biggest role to malign Islam, to destroy the image of Islam. So we Muslims living in any community, we have higher responsibility. The evils are more than the truth. We have the heart, the truth. We just have to present it in the best manner. Present it by ourselves, present it in our activities, and to explain it to others so that they can understand what is Islam. The politicians are busy, the academics are busy, the professions and the other people, the critics and the orientalists, they are busy to produce materials how to attack Islam. So we have to have the methodology in order to reply to them and in order to explain to them that look, this is what is misconceptions that is surrounding on. Uh, let it be any political issues or issue of the social problems. We should explain that how Islam defines the solutions to the problems of mankind. Let it be any problem, be in any society. Explain the methodology of what is in Islam and explain to them as a model that you imagine if this concept is established in any society, shall there be this problem will continue or decline. And any rational man or woman who have their intellect, they have to appreciate that the methodology is sustainable for any uh, organized or civil society. Now we have to arm ourselves, we have to spend some time in order to articulate the material that we should, that we should deliver to. And we should be selective on our arguments. What arguments should we for, put forward for them to understand? And uh, the best way is the example of the Prophet Muhammad's mm -hmm. life. Uh, look at how he was. He got the first revelation at the age of 40. He was struggling for 20 years. At the age of 60, so he was, maybe he was busy with his grandchildren and families. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him the message through Archangel Gibrail alayhi salam. That Wamar Salnaka, that all you, all the prophets, I have sent you. Wamar illa rahmatan lil alameen. I have sent you as a mercy to the all of the world. Wamar Salnaka illa kafatan lil nas. I have sent you, O prophets, for the whole of mankind. Bashira, give them glad tidings who follow you. Wanazira, give them warning who follows the evil. Walakilla aksaran nas la ayalamun. But the bulk of the mankind yet do not know. So we have been given this instruction uh, through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the Prophet Muhammad wa sallam, and he understood the, the depth of the message. So he immediately called the scribes, those who can read and write. So writing letters to the king of Abyssinia, to the king of Persia, to the emperor of Egypt, Nagas of Abyssinia and Constantinople. The five letters, one horseman with one letter, thousand miles east and thousand miles west, carrying the message of peace towards their fellow countrymen, to the other countries. And in the farewell pilgrimage of the Prophet Muhammad Islam, there was about 110,000 Sahabas who were present. The Prophet Muhammad Islam was delivering the khutbah, the sermon, and most of them were crying because he says, I don't know whether I will be there with you in the next year or not. Mm -hmm. So the Sahabas understood the message. And he says, those of you who are here, they should carry my message to those who are not here the same manner or the best manner that you can prescribe to them. And did everyone understand? So the, all the Sahabas, they said, yes, we understand. So out of those 110,000 Sahabas, less than 10,000 are buried in the Arabia. The rest of them, they split out, went out to the land of Indonesia, Malaysia, and Spain, and India, and Granada, and, and all these ways they were splitting, carrying the messes in their hands, the Book of Allah, and the message of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu And now out of their hard works, Alhamdulillah, we become Muslim. Our ancestors, they become Muslim. We submit ourselves to peace. Now, we have the same message to carry to others, those who we are living with. We have more responsibility to them. So this is the message that we should carry to them, that this is Islam. And we should follow the lifestyle of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he was the living example of what is prescribed in the Quran, showing the good manners. The best thing that we can do is the manners, to uplift the good manners among the Muslims, to show the non-Muslims what Islam is. So, my dear brothers, the unity of the Muslims 
and the identity of the Muslims is depend on their uh, actions. The actions is very simple that we should be active in the society, be not uh, the one who is silent in home and doing nothing, seeing the things and put the things uh, on very few people. We need scholars to spread Islam. We don't need scholars. The Prophet, peace be upon him, he made it easy for his Ummah to carry the message of Dawah. In the Hadith of Sayyid Bukhari, in the volume 4, Hadith number 667, the Prophet, peace be upon him, says, anni wa aya. You convey on my behalf, even if you know one single, one single ayah, one single thing is from Islam. As long as we know it correctly, we are told to immediately to pass it to others. By Allah, we know many things that is good in Islam. You see, the, in the world today, if we put the statistics, the Muslims are the most hygienic people in the world. They, we use the water, the maximum water, to clean ourselves. I'm talking about personal hygiene. The most hygienic people we are. The Muslims are the most charitable people in the world. The Muslims are the people who are the least consumption of alcoholics. We have the least number of divorce rate in our community. And we have the highest number of charitable people in our community. So we should put forward these good things. You know, Islam comes to make us active, not as a passive, waiting and resting our life in the weekends, uh, seeing the movies and the televisions and others. No, we should be active in the community. Look for whom you find. Let it be uh, your neighbors. Let it be in sports activity. Show Islam. Show what does Islam say about this? How to behave with the fellow human being? What should we do if we arise a problem? Address the social issues. That this is the problem that the society contains. So how Islam address to solve this problem in the society? Let the society take it or not. At least we have done our job. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Surah Al-Ghashiyah chapter 88 verse 21 and 22 that fazakir in the muzakir. It is the duty of the Muslims to convey the message. Last alayhim bin That we are not a manager upon anyone to see that they are accepting, accepting what we are telling. We are not the one who give them guidance. But our job is to deliver the message the best way we can. As long as we convey it correctly. And the rest of the things we put it to Allah. Because He guides whom He wants. So... If we convey the message and if we start to move ourselves to be active in the community, to be more active in Dawah, inshallah the community will success and the success is for humanity. There is nothing to lose for the humanity. Explain it to them that Islam is not an enemy of anyone. We are inviting everyone to submit their will to peace. Not we are becoming an offender to someone to their freedoms. No, we are inviting them to accept the freedom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by submitting their will to the freedom of Allah, to the will of Allah. And there they will understand what is the spirituality. Explain to them a simple message of Tawheed. What is the monotheism? What is Tawheed? And then we can expand the little things what we can. So this is the things, my dear brothers and sisters, uh, we, should, we should carry on. I learned from the history of the Qur'an uh, and we all should take messages from the Qur'an. The Qur'an prescribes about the uh, life story of various prophets, about 24 prophets uh, mentioned in the Qur'an, uh, like Prophet Musa, -salam, Prophet Ibrahim, -salam, Prophet Daud, -salam, Prophet Isa, -salam, Prophet Muhammad, -salam, how they were working with their community, how, they were, how rebellious and the brutal were the community was before they the message comes and what was their struggle and how was their achievement at the end so we should take our lessons from them I mean I being a man a very young man I took lessons from the Quran like we know the story of the Dawud he was he was very young and mashallah he had very courageous inside him so in the Surah Al-Baqarah chapter 2 verse 153 to forward we find his history that what he was doing we know the story of Jalud and the Talud. So there was a fighting between Palestinian and the Israelis. Not the present Israel, but at that time. So uh, the Jalud was a person who was eight feet long and a very heavy person, putting his feet and everybody was shivering because he was a heavy man. Like you see in many movies, a very big man with the big battles, with the big swords and everything. So all the soldiers uh, from the land were 
Daud was living, they were shivering to fight against this man. He was, he was powerful. And Daud he was taking care of the 